A lot of you wanted to see this Dell Latitude C610 all rebuilt and running a new operating system. Well, I promised you guys I'd make the video and I kept putting it off. A lot more things came up. I got that GX280 over there running Windows 8. I got that HP DV5000. I still got to make a review on that red netbook over there. Oh, and that compact I made a video about. So now it's the Dell Latitude C610's turn. I kind of feel bad because it's probably thinking, oh, now I'm the least important. Now I know this machine doesn't have feelings, or any machines don't have feelings, but my feeling is this is one of my most favorite notebooks ever made by Dell. The reason why I say that is because, well, it was my very first Windows XP computer. At that time I didn't like it because there's a lot of things wrong with it. But after patience and many years of waiting, I got it restored and now I have to say it's my favorite notebook. The reason why I say that is because it's tough. It may not look tough, but it's pretty durable. If you watched that one video from B Bishop PCM called Let's Destroy a Dell Laptop, he had a metal flashlight and kept smashing the crap out of the out of the machine and the damn thing still ran. It it just wouldn't die. So after all the years of abuse that I gave this thing by smashing the screen, pounding on the keyboard, the hard drive survived, and the machine survived. So I'm happy I kept this machine because one of my friends in the IT department said, hey, I got these old laptops here, what do you want me to do with them? I said, well, let me take a look at them. And to my surprise, it was a box of Dell Latitude C610s. He asked me if I wanted them, and I said, oh, hell yeah. And I asked if he had a screen um, lying around for one, and he said, yeah, I do. So I picked one up, threw it in the box, and I got a box of Dell Latitudes and a spare screen. Only two of them were working. Um, I still have the other one. Um, it doesn't have a keyboard on it. The other one does turn on, but you really have to pound on the power button to get it to turn on. Um, let's see. The other one is badly damaged on the corner. So I wouldn't really say these are tough machines, but they're really tough when you beat them. But the plastic shell does crack and break. Um, the only noticeable damage on this one that I can't fix is the power jack. You notice that there's some plastic broken away from it. And I can't really fix that because the power jack is actually soldered to the board. And in order to fix that, I would have to take the power jack out and put a new one in. The other Dell, well, pretty much shows the same amount of damage. This is entire side from here to back here is all crushed in, and some of the plastic on the power jack is broken. So, I don't know. I was only able to make two working machines. I made one for my mother. The deal was, I said to her, I'll make you a new laptop. Well, not new, but a usable laptop. If I can have the little red Acer Spire 1. She said, okay. It's no use to me because the keyboard don't work. Um, which is true. This machine has had milk spilt on it and I cleaned it once. Then it got water 
damage inside from someone wiping a cloth on it to clean the keyboard and mouse pad. And the water was sitting in there too long and the keyboard died. So now I gotta order a new keyboard for it. And there, there's actually a person on Kijiji who wants to trade his Acer laptop for an older Acer Aspire 1. And I just so have one, but fucking keyboard's missing. So that really pisses me off. I don't like netbooks, and I would like to trade for his laptop. But he's not interested because there's no keyboard. So easy come, easy go. So anyway, out of the three Dell, or the two laptops that I got in that box, with that spare screen, I was only able to make two working Dells. One for me, one for my mom. Hers is running Windows XP, Service Pack 3, 512 megs of RAM, and of course it has a one gigahertz Pentium 3 processor. Now, already I'm starting to see uh, some wearing on hers. The first thing that is starting to wear out is the screen hinges on hers. You notice the hinges on mine are very tight. That's basically how her laptop was when I first made it. Well, since she uses it every day, she's constantly tilting the screen back and forth from the opening and closing actions. And it's basically wearing out the hinges a lot faster than I thought. The hinges on mine are in perfect condition still because I haven't used it. Not very much like I would like to, but sorry. The reason why I didn't use this computer is because, well, when I got these Dell laptops, the hard drives had been taken out. So I had to sacrifice the one that was in here for my mom's laptop. It was a 30 gigabyte uh, Hitachi drive. And it's still working. And that was the original hard drive to this machine. Uh, that hard drive was in here ever since I pounded on the keyboard and broke the screen and threw this laptop and hit it with a broom and a baseball bat. You know, like, that hard drive was still in this machine from all that force being brought down to this computer. So I had to improvise. I thought, okay, well, why don't I look into my parts bin and see if I have a hard drive. What do you know? I found two. Only problem is, they're both dead. Oh god, was I pissed off. I don't remember where the hell I got this one. It is a Western Digital WD600VE Scorpio. And it is a 60 gigabyte drive. Well, I put the hard drive in, tried to load Windows XP, didn't work. I also have a copy of w Windows Vista Home or Windows Vista Ultimate Lite. I put the installation disk in, and Windows Vista actually spotted that the hard drive was indeed failing. It says, this hard drive will fail soon. You must replace it. it. Still allowed me to install Windows on it. Only when it got to about 50%. That's when it, the drive failed. So, this Western Digital Drive is dead. Don't know where the hell it came from, but... Hey, I guess it's free. This hard drive is... I don't know what the hell it is. I'm assuming it's underneath that sticker 
I don't know why the hell anyone would put a sticker over top. If I can't tell what the drive is. It came out of a IBM ThinkPad. I don't know which one though. It actually belonged to a student in a grade five class and friends with the teacher at this elementary school where I service the computers at. And student walks up to me and says, hey, my laptop died. I have RAM and a wireless card and a hard drive for it. Would you like them? And I said, sure, I'll take them. So I tested the RAM out and I tested the wireless card out. They worked fine. Since this computer was in dire need of a hard drive, I threw this one in, fired it up, and the first thing that I heard was the click, click, click sound. And I thought, oh, you got to be friggin' kidding me. So the IBM 40 gigabyte drive failed. And I thought, wait a minute. That student just told me that their laptop died. I hope they're not going to do anything stupid to it, like smash it up or anything. Hopefully, if I go back there again for any computer repairs, I'll speak to him and say, Hey, remember when you told me your laptop died and you gave me those parts? Your laptop didn't die, your hard drive did. So, here I have two defective hard drives. first one I don't know where it came from this one came from a student they're both dead so anyway I had to come up with a different option and I didn't like this one this is my IBM ThinkPad a31 laptop computer it is also one of my favorites because it has the think light and it also has the awesome speakers on it. The only thing, or two things that were wrong with this laptop, or actually three, I'll point out three because there is three problems. The first one, the wireless card never worked. So I plunked down $20 for a wireless card that eventually died. I don't know how this thing died, but it did. So afterwards, I realized, oh yeah, the USB ports are badly damaged. So, plunked down $7 for this USB 2. Still works, nothing wrong with it. And the battery doesn't charge. So, I have a laptop here that has a non-working wireless card, busted USB ports, and I had to invest $27 into the damn thing. So I thought, well, a laptop that is older than this thing is faster. And not only is it a little bit faster, the wireless card works and the USB ports work. So I thought, okay, well, since one is better than the other, out comes the hard drive and goes into the Dell. It was a bad, bad decision because I really like this machine, even though I don't use it, but I still like it though. Um, so I put it in the Dell because I know the Dell has a lot more potential than this thing ever will. But hope is not lost. This is the hard drive from this laptop. Once I gave my mom the 30 gig drive for the one upstairs. This one is a 6 gigabyte drive from July of 2000. I think I'll install Windows 2000 on it and put it in the IBM and it does say IBM on it, so, you know, this might work. But yeah, like, 
I don't know. I'll put it in the IBM. I'm not sure if I want to put Windows XP Lite on it or Windows 2000. I kind of like XP because, meh. I don't know, more compatibility instead of 2000. Anyway, enough babbling on about hard drives and that shit. Clearly, I'm all out of hard drives and stuff, so I gotta try to restock from work and all that. Anyway, let's fire up the Dell. New sticker, new palm rest, a keyboard that's not even worn out, not even on the space bar. So, let's fire it up. The only thing that is missing from this laptop is the battery. My mom's laptop upstairs has a, a dummy battery, which is fake, it's not real. And the clock battery's dead in this one. My mom has all the luxury because her laptop has a working clock battery and mine doesn't. And she has a dummy battery in hers. Mine doesn't have one. Well, I'm trying to give my mom a decent computer. She doesn't carry it around the house or anything because she knows that the battery doesn't charge. And she doesn't really take it anywhere. Damn it! You remember how that plastic piece on the, um, where the power cord plugs in is broken? That's why I can't really carry this laptop. It has to sit here and I can't move it. But, tee hee oops. Let's try again. You can hear that 25 gigabyte drive from the IBM ThinkPad. Now this machine is running Windows Vista Home Premium. Why do I keep saying Home Premium? Windows Vista Ultimate Lite. I did that because Windows XP will be cut from support within two years, like 2013, 2014. So I wanted to see how Windows Vista ran on here. And to be real honest, it kicks ass. It's pretty good. Even when I had XP on here, it was still a little bit slow. Like, there's 512 megs of RAM in here, and a 1 gigahertz processor. My mom's has the same thing, same amount of RAM, same processor, different hard drive. But hers is a little bit slow. Even when I had XP on here, it was still slow. So, what I'm saying is, XP wasn't fast on here. And Windows Vista pretty much acts the same way as XP. Just a, a tiny bit slower, but not too bad. And to my amazement, when I installed Windows Vista, the sound drivers worked, which you'll hear in a minute. Oh. Okay, never mind, it works. So anyway, the sound driver worked. Not only did the sound driver work, but the video card driver works. I don't get Windows Aero, but still enough that I can use the Windows in here, like, so it's not too laggy. Um, my wireless card immediately worked, so Instead of having Windows XP where I have to do the driver searching and all that, I think Windows Vista is just fine for this machine. I like pushing my computers to their limits to see how far they can go. So that's exactly what I did. Now even though this machine has a very annoying IBM Travel Star hard drive in it from the IBM ThinkPad, it still gets the job done. Um, I really wish I had more hard drives that were quiet, like the one that's upstairs in my mom's computer. Oops. But anyway, 
it still gets the job done for me. It's not a powerhouse computer, but you notice that there's no lagging when I'm moving the screen or the window around. When I was downloading the updates, I downloaded the ATI driver and ran it in compatibility mode for Windows XP. And Windows Vista doesn't have a problem with it. So that's a thumbs up. I don't know, do I have Microsoft Office on here? Oh, I do. Cool. See how quick that opens. A little slow, but like I said, when Windows XP was on here, and even on my mom's computer, it still acts really slow. So, nothing I can do. I won't be installing any major updates on this computer, because, may I remind you guys, there's a 25 gig hard drive in here. The minute I'm done installing those updates, it's going to be full, and already, it's pretty much getting there. So I'm just going to use this computer as a music station or just a kick around computer when I need it. Now I can't open Safari because for some reason the inst installer failed and every time when I attempt to open it I get a blue screen. So I guess I have to reinstall Safari or probably go with Firefox. But I can open Windows Internet Explorer. I think I'm running Windows Internet Explorer 7 on here, I don't know. Let's see if I can go on YouTube. It's probably going to tell me that the browser's not supported. And... Still waiting. And is it going to tell me? probably need to get a, a flash player installed, I don't know. If I do, then I'll, I'll definitely do that. Why don't I visit B Bishop PCM's channel, which is Brandon's? Oh, comes right up on the list. I like watching his videos, so I guess it comes up all the time when I press the B twice. Now, since this is a Dell Latitude C610, why don't I watch the video where he destroys the Dell Latitude C610? Oh, so slow. But that's just age for ya. I'm just gonna type in Dell and it might come up. My sister's watching some sort of paranormal or documentary. I don't know what it is. So please excuse the loud screaming. Okay, so here's the video. It definitely came up. I'm not sure if it's going to play though, but it might. If it does, that'd be cool. Okay, so... Oh! I don't need to get a, a flash player. I think I still have to update the browser though. And this thing does have an older wireless card so it might take longer to load the video. Stupid hard drive. Things always loud. And we're going to answer a ponderable question in this particular video. What happens when you strike the laptop screen? Let's see if I can. With a loaded four cell D. Oh, Jesus Christ, that. There goes the fan.
flashlight. Still works. Let's try the other one. Thing's still running. <laughs> the battery's actually taking a charge. Wish this well, one did. unfortunately, this Dell Latitude has a busted screen, and I have. Oh shit! Why did I do that? So what do you say? We have a little fun. So anyway, got a funny glimpse of that. I thought this video is pretty funny. Um, so I don't know. Every time when I watch it, I kind of laugh because every time when he beats the computer with the flashlight, the hard drive makes that "you" sound. But anyway, so yeah, you can watch YouTube videos on here. I think I'll have to update the flash player though, and possibly the browser. Windows isn't, or, well, YouTube isn't asking me to update it, so I think I'll just keep the browser and update the Flash Player. Hmm. Still turns on. Wow. That's quality. Still responds to the caps lock. May I remind you guys, this is pretty much how my laptop looked like when the keyboard was all smashed up. This is a perfect example right here. The Dell Latitude that I've ever seen. Is there anything this thing can't handle? And by the way, the flashlight bulb is still good. Actually, the, the tail cap came loose. So. So yeah, you see what I mean, how those things are pretty tough, no matter how hard you beat them, they still run. So, thanks be Bishop PCM or Brandon for that perfect example of a Dell Latitude. Um, but yeah, this is one of my favorite computers ever made by Dell, in a notebook form. I just wish I could get a battery for it, and I don't want to go on eBay, because I don't really know how to use eBay. I just do Kijiji. Oh, copyright. Don't want to get big shit for it. Media guide. Yeah, if YouTube spotted my music on there, it would probably get me in trouble for it. But yeah, Media Player still works on here. Um, I can listen to internet radio. I don't think there's a problem against that. If I'm not allowed to listen to music on um, my computer, then I guess I can do internet radio then. I don't know. I'm going to click jazz because I kind of like jazz. Yeah, this thing kind of legs with the internet here. It's about time that fan shut off, because I really hate listening to that. Okay, how about I listen to classic jazz? I kind of like classic type music. Oh, and I could have clicked piano jazz. Damn it. Yeah, I guess it's not too late. I'm going to click piano jazz, because I like piano a lot more. Is 
so it says media changing. I want to test how the the visualizations work on here. I want to see how good they are. Because that tells me that the graphic graphics card will work. So it's connecting to media. Oh, look at that. That's nice. So just for seeing this, it tells me that I can play movies on here. And I won't have a problem. So anyway, I think Windows Vista will run just fine on this computer. Um, it does run a little bit slow, uh, a little bit slower than Windows XP, but I think when I compare both of them, it's pretty much the same. When it comes to loading the internet, Windows XP is pretty slow with that too. Startup time's a little bit slow, but if I put this computer in hibernation, and then start it up from hibernation, it will just run fine. But starting it up is... sometimes takes a little while. So I'm going to put it in hibernate. So yeah, the Dell Latitude C610 is back to life. Well, partially, because it's missing a part, which is the battery. Heck, I don't care if I do get a battery. It, it would be nice. I, I asked um, my friend in the IT department if, like, where the batteries went, because there was only one of them that had a dummy battery. And he honestly doesn't know, so I guess they were either recycled or someone got to them before I did. But, anyway... So that has been the Dell Latitude C610. Thanks for watching.